<coughs> All right, it is 10.45. We know that other folks will join in. Um, now, lots of you know some of this information. You may not know all of this information. And for those of you who are not Worcester affiliated, um, Please, please ask questions. Let us know anything that you're curious about. We can dig a little bit deeper into that and offer some examples. This is not an interactive session. We are gonna go fast and we are gonna cover a bucket of content because <laughs> people always have questions about this program overall. And we are years and years into it. There's a lot to share. So we are gonna jump in. This is the link to the slide deck. We will also post it to SCED, but if you need it now, there it is. And we're here to talk about this program um, that is in Worcester Public Schools. It is called the iTeacher Program, and it is the brainchild of one Sarah Kiriazis, who's sitting in the back there. <laughs> um, so the year is 2017. Let us all go back in the Wayback Machine. <laughs> the year is 2017. Sarah has been newly hired in Worcester Public Schools. Casey got to work with Sarah at the previous job. Casey is pumped about this um, new opportunity. And here's where we were. Let's see. Thanks, Bethany. So Sarah knew that the reality that was happening in Worcester around the tech, which we're going to dig into in a little bit, um, was not enabling students, right? It was not empowering students. It was not, um, it was not serving the folks in the district. It was not serving um, our learners. So Oop. this, Sorry. thank you. Sorry. So this is what has come out of five years of this program. Right? We are now in year five. This is the vision that we're working with in this program, but also this is the vision for the department overall um, in Worcester. So we're working to build digital skills and knowledge that create a community of empowered learners who use tech with curiosity, agency, and joy. Right? And we all, those of us who sat through the previous session in this room and who went to the keynote, know the importance of that connection between curiosity, agency, and joy with our own ability to learn and um, how we bring our fullest selves to our learning experiences and how our students do. Great, thanks. Some of the ways that this happens in the district, right? We've got, we know that we have, we're work, looking at tools and skills around access and equ equity. We're working on curriculum and content and thinking about digital learning, computer science, um, which there are other sessions that cover a bunch of these things in more detail, so check your schedule. Um, and we're always looking at that tech integration and using the triple E framework underneath there, which you'll probably recognize. Thank you. So. What came out of that original um, 2017 looking at, what did we have? We had one desktop computers, PC per classroom. one PC per classroom, right, is where we were at that time. And so the iTeacher group emerged. Here is a bit of the story of those iTeachers. Go right ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Great. So. We started back then, and we were just kind of like, oh, we hope people like it. Let's see what happens if we get some Chromebooks in the hands of 20, 25 um, educators. Let's see what happens. That led us into our second cohort because people were into it, right? And off we went until we are now in cohort eight, which many of whom are sitting in this room and all of whom are at this conference. Now, these folks, go right ahead. Right. This is the process that we bring them through. So we call the, we call folks I teachers because it is innovative teacher leaders in the district. It goes far beyond teachers. But the thing that started it all was knowing that folks were not being served by the tech was what happens if we bring Chromebooks in and what <laughs> happens if we get a certified trainer in every building in Worcester Public Schools. So that was the goal of the I teacher program. Okay, so yeah, what are we at? So in 2017, we started the cohort with a small portion of Chromebooks. And here we are today. That's what 2023 looks like. You all, we were sitting with people showing them how to log in, how to open them up, what kinds of limitations we were having. By year two, folks were like, yeah, we know how Chromebooks work. 
By year three, they were like, I need these in my students' hands right now. Right? It was a really, really fast shift. And the buzz that came from that initial group right, really started to shift culture beyond just not just in their buildings, but principals became interested. Admin, you know, lots of administrators become interested. And so we wound up actually building cohorts for them as well. This is what that first year <laughs> looked like. <laughs> this was before they had the white glove service and then never again. <laughs> All right, so right now, as it stands, we have 186 iTeachers. Those are folks who have been involved in the program overall. We have met 177 times uh, with those folks. We meet with each cohort about six to seven times a year. And certified trainers, we are currently at 92, which is the highest number of Google certified trainers in a district in the country. Isn't that fun? That's y'all. <laughs> Now, we started out with Chromebooks. We started out with Google. We started out wanting to get just the tech in people's hands because we knew that it could make many, many things possible. But what we found was as soon as we put these folks into these, so as soon as we started supporting folks in these leadership roles, it was way more than Google. This is some of what we are now seeing as a result of iTeachers. Right? And we're looking just at the iTeacher group, what others have done beyond that, right? Not even reflected up here. So we can see that from that initial vision to just a few years in, right, we have built so much capacity, partially by giving people, um, by acknowledging their work, by funding and stipending and showing the value of that work, right? And um, in part, just the opportunities for folks to meet each other and work together to build some of the um, resources around the learning needs that their colleagues had, right? It's been a big deal. Okay. So this is, um, this is the program overall and the things that we were asking for them. Every year we create a job posting so that those new co cohorts could be formed. Um, we had teachers that needed to apply for that, so we laid out exactly what their requirements were. They didn't leave their position in the classroom. This was an addition, additional spot for them. They were provided with a stipend, and we took them out of the classroom for six full days, and we provided them the content that we needed, that we knew that they would need to be successful models and teacher leaders within their school. So um, part of this uh, job application was a partnership between the principal and the teacher to know that the school itself was supporting this learning. Um, we have a posting that goes out in the fall for our new, stipe, our new cohorts. And then we also have a posting that went out for the existing iTeachers who were remaining in that role. Because remember, the goal when we began this in 2017 was to be able to create an environment where every school had a teacher leaner, leader. Um, at the time when we started in 2017, we had two tech coaches to support the entire district. So the goal was to be able to ramp up our teacher leadership. Everything that we do with our cohorts, we gather all of that evidence and contain it within um, Google Classroom. And when we first began, we did have a lot of forms and there were submissions that were done that way. Um, but by cohort three, we really did turn over to the idea of using Classroom as our main source of evidence. So through here are all of our cohort meetings, all of the materials that we provide, and then the ongoing resources that we give them, but also a way for them to track their, their tests, the level one, level two, any training that they're doing, we ask to see all of those materials and then um, being able to see the process to be able to apply as a Google certified trainer. Folks get feedback from instructors on their training evidence mm -hmm. and on trainer application materials. Mm -hmm. right. So very quickly in year one we're really working with our teachers to become Google certified trainers though our program is not just about Google certified trainers it's really the integration and the training to give professional development within the school. And then as an ongoing participation after they become a Google Certified Trainer, we're asking that they continue to train within their building. They're the ones bringing back these resources to the teachers. And we're gathering all of that evidence um, as they're in the program. 
We have a one-stop shop for our session feedback that we use every single time. We want to know how our sessions go. We want to know what people took away from that and can use tomorrow. We want to know ways to make it better. Um, and so we've been using the same feedback form. We did revamp it about two, a little over two years ago. Um, and you can see we've got 431 responses because we're continuing to use that same feedback. This allows us to go um, when we're planning our next session to look back the year before and say, here are some of the positives that we found. Here's some of the things that participants would like changed. And we can make those changes as we're revisiting that material and content. We've created a website where teachers are adding in the professional developments that they're doing. And we're gonna share that with our ne next cohort eight as we're going too. But we don't want teachers to think that they have to remake the wheel for all of this. Um, as trainings are needed, this is a space that they can go and search for things that are already created. We ask that there are agendas and things spelled out so that you can give this professional development and everything is found right here. We build a cohort model and we're really trying to work together so that we're building these teachers to include other buildings um, so that nobody is standing alone. We've got some, some models that we put in the beginning. They're building their, their profiles as they're becoming an eye teacher with us. We continue to have conversation with them even the times that we're not meeting. So we put out monthly newsletters. We have all of these um, spaces available where people can ask questions. So yes, we can email, you can email your tech coach, but how can we make sure that we're answering each other's questions? Because the questions don't have to come back to us as the facilitators. Sometimes it's something that you're doing in your building and you're looking for an additional resource that another teacher might have. So we do use um, spaces as part of our PLNs. So we're building the knowledge that we in isolation are gonna pass on and share. So we've got several of them. We've, we've brought these in even to our principals and our assistant principals so that they're in a space where they can have conversation together. And it gives them real time, fast feedback. And like I said, it doesn't have to be waiting for just us right. for and that information. Folks know, uh, we, did, we did not mention this at the beginning. Uh, I'm Casey, that's Bethany. Um, <laughs> and so I do not work in Worcester Public Schools. I work for the Collaborative for Educational Services. I am an external consultant who has been a part of this project since its inception. Um, but that is one of the reasons that we use Google Spaces, right? Is because that's, I can be a part of that conversation. And so while I'm not gonna chime in on why Clever's down, right? I am absolutely gonna chime in on why people are doing this, their rationale for this, do you have a resource for this, right, what, et cetera. This is the breakdown of our work, right? We just went through a bunch of different things that are all work, right? It is labor to maintain that classroom. It, you know, we are giving feedback. You are doing all of these things. Bethany is managing the logistical processes around that. This is essential. Anybody that I work with as a consultant who is like, we want to do a project like this one that we have in Worcester, and we want you to run it. Cool. I can't. This has to be <coughs> internal, right? This is absolutely crucial, partially because it gives the ownership, right, to the district. And I am out here, I'm co-designing, co-planning co-facilitating, right? I'm participating in those and I'm presenting at conferences for things like this, but I am not the lead on any of this. The district's needs, the learner's needs are always what's driving that and I am a partner in the learning. Do you wanna say anything about you on there? No, I, th <laughs> I think that this really, it, the partnership is really important. So Casey brings a great lens from the outside of the district part. But from within the district, we need to have the postings for the, for the jobs to be going out. And that wouldn't be able to happen by somebody from the outside. We do manage everything in the classroom. So response and feedback is given within there. And the newsletter is, is what's going on in Google that might be new, but also what else do they need that's important to the district too can be included in there. Um, but we do work very well together, mm -hmm. so it works. So. So one of the things that we knew was going to be important from the beginning was establishing an identity, right? Like what makes this program worth it for people to participate in besides all of the intellectual excitement, obviously, right? Um, and so there's a bunch of perks for this process. So one of the first is that group identity, right? So when folks become innovative teacher leaders, they get 
a beautiful name badge that has badging on the back about where they are in their process. Once people, well, well, we'll talk through some of these, right? We can see these. We are, it is not hyperbole. You all, we are like giddy every time we get a new cohort. Like we are so excited to see you. Um, and so that joy, that energy, we really hope, right, transfers to our learners. And we hope that, the, that folks are bringing that to the work that they get to do with adult learners. Right. So we try to visually disrupt spaces. So what does that actually mean? When you walk in, you will see a placemat at every single table. Right? Whatever room we're in, you're going to see these. This is a small way that we can like visually disrupt the room to let folks know you are here for professional learning. This is not your classroom. Right? This is not going to be the. This is not business as usual. We are doing a different thing over here. Come play. Right? People get to wear these pretty things. We see these when we walk in. Instru uh, facilitators are often wearing these little branded jackets. We've got badges and things that we give people to put on their doors and all around the room. Right? And one of the things we know about adult learning is it cannot be business as usual, right? We cannot do this in the way that they have always been done. And so just a small example, but like we do these sessions in a library, right? And it's a library with space. We're very fortunate to have it. And so this is just a snapshot from one of our early sessions of folks doing the breakout rooms. This is small, but not <laughs> insignificant, y'all. The cookies are so good. <laughs> Not even joking. That's like the thing we miss most in remote learning. Um, so one of the other ways that we try very hard to um, like honor and reward folks who are a part of this is by having special events. We have had Eric Kurtz come a couple of times and speak. Eric Kurtz from Control Alt Achieve. If you don't know, please go and check him out. You will be very happy. Um, so we have brought uh, Worcester has brought him in for uh, specific sessions. We also go on field trips. We have had the good fortune to spend some time at the Google Cambridge offices. Um, we have not been able to do this with every cohort, but we try to do it as much as possible to get folks out of, out into other spaces where they get to experience their learning, their role as leader in different ways. This conference is this cohort's field trip. Mm -hmm. Once people have become certified trainers, we get pumped, right? <laughs> so Bethany gets to go do some special deliveries of some swag. Included in that, we will find these lovely um, little fleeces which all have the Google Certified Trainer on them. So it's not even saying you're at Worcester necessarily. It's just letting folks know that they've reached the milestone. Right? You get it, you're a trainer. Like you worked <laughs> hard for this, right? Um, it's a small thing, but it creates visibility and acknowledgement for the individuals from the leaders, but also f among their peers, right? You're walking through a building like this, your building knows you are the resource, right? That they're gonna turn to when they have questions, not just about like, oh, why is this down? But when they have questions about like, God, can you really talk to me, talk me through how you're setting this kind of activity up digitally so that I can better understand and do this with my learners? We try very hard to include a whole lot of choice and a whole lot of accountability, right? We showed you that Google Classroom where we're collecting that certificate information and we try to include as much choice, movement, right? We do broad strokes about what you need to be doing around certification. We do um, lots of talk about um, being a trainer, not just about the tech. And as part of that, our hope is that people are always bringing that back to their own practice. What does this look like for my second grade classroom and my colleagues in this elementary school? What does this look like for my Algebra 1 class, right? So by giving choice and accountability, we're hoping that folks are bringing that in and making it relevant for themselves. So how do we get there? So how do we get there? 
So at this point, um, where we are since we started this in 2017, we did begin with level one. Now that we're at cohort eight, we're asking our teachers to come with the skills of already having passed the level one um, test. Level one is really the enhancing of your teaching. And so we dive deeper into what level two content is. And that really is integrating successfully the use of all of these tools into the classroom so that it's really transforming learning. So what does learning really look like when technology is used and used in appropriate integrated way? From there, we build skills on what it means to be a trainer. Anybody could come up and teach on something, but do they have the right skills to teach it? So we've set aside some guidelines of things that we ask our teachers to do. We want them to plan out their training so they have a facilitator agenda they use. They're creating material, and all of this is given to them um, when we're going through trainer skills content. And then from there, we walk them through the process of becoming a Google Certified Trainer. And what does that mean? To be a Google Certified Trainer, you do have to have given professional development. So we help our teachers understand what that means to give professional development. We walk them through creating their video and reflecting on that professional development so that they can pass that all into Google. And we become the middle person. So we're not the judge for Google. We are not Google, but we do know what Google's looking for. What does it mean to have an innovative training? What are you showing off? Why do you want this? And so we help our teachers formulate those videos so that they can pass everything into Google and then from there, they become the Google Certified Trainer and we deliver, their, deliver them all of their goodies. In addition to the Google Trainer content, right, the getting folks there, um, that is just the start of what we do, mm -hmm. right? We also talk a lot about ISTE, right, and how that is supported by this program. Um, the ISTE standards, um, we have, oh, I cannot remember how many people now, but we have a number of uh, Worcester Public Schools folks who have gone through the ISTE certification. I am one of the... Um, trainers for the ISTE certification for New England, and so I've had the good fortune of getting to work with folks in both ways, but that has also given us a window into what this actually looks like in the district. So, we talk ISTE. What else do we talk? Great. Protecting student data, right? When the district has initiatives that they need folks really, really thinking more deeply on, and we've got things like trying to help people understand the implications for student data, why we need to protect it, right? We can have Hayden come on in and do that content as a guest speaker. We talk about TPAC, we talk about instruct tech integration models, right? So we're not just teaching people, here's how you do the things, here's how you click things, right? We're really having trainers um, step into the leadership role and think about the frameworks that we're using to guide the work that we are all doing together. Mm -hmm. right? We love having Flash PD. We're going to be having some Flash TPD at basically at the end of our session, right? Those Ignite sessions that we're doing at the end of today. Um, similar two minutes for folks to have an opportunity to show something cool they're doing and they wish other people knew about. This is a really, really basic version of like one of our choice boards, right? One of the things that we know is that people are like, but what's Google, right? Like we know what the core apps are, we know some of these things, but like what's some of the cool um, other items or other projects that are available? And so, we set aside some time, folks have this as a choice board, they can dig in, find the things that are most relevant, and figure out what that means in their classroom. We also role play, everybody's favorite. We know everyone loves role play, <laughs> um, right? And so this is one of the things we do where, because we are having folks in this coaching role, we want them to think about what is going on for the person they're coaching, right? And so we yep. role play there. And early on, we tell stories. <laughs> and when we introduce this idea, everybody's like, no, I don't want to, but <laughs> they usually like it. <laughs> right? But this is an opportunity where we're trying to create a little bit of a cohort identity so that folks do get to know each other, have some connections there, so that when they go to the next phase of um, the like certification and the iTeacher process, they have some folks they know well as they go in and get to know the previous seven or soon eight cohorts. How many do we have? We have a bunch. We now have, like, we offer people the YouTube playlist of just Worcester Public Schools educators who have been Google certified. So you can see a massive range of what these um, application videos can look like. 
and this is our goal with the actual training, right? <laughs> we want to get people from feeling like Robin on the left to really feeling like Robin on the right. Okay, so we role play, we talk about coaching, we um, talk about frameworks, we talk about updates in Google, and we talk about change, right? One of the things that we know is that when you're working in ed tech, you're in the process of managing change and it's complex and people have monster feelings about it. And so we use this model partially to manage what we're doing, but also as a tool that we put in the hands of iTeachers, right? Now, why would we do this? There are five key elements for managing a complex change. Um, this is from, uh, this is the lipid nostril model. When you have those, things are successful. When you are sitting in a building and you're responsible for coaching a group of people and you were like, every time we try a thing, we are getting false starts. What's going on? They might be missing the action plan. What can we do to build an action plan, right, in our building? When we're feeling, when we are working with folks and they seem frustrated, they're not frustrated with you. This is not interpersonal conflict, right? They are frustrated with a process. They are frustrated with the fact that they do not have the resources that they think are necessary to, in order to successfully, like, be a part of this change, right? So, as we go through this list, right, the idea is by giving uh, coaches and eye teachers this as a sort of reference, it allows us to step back, have a little perspective, and be able to consider not why are you acting like this? Why won't you learn from me? I can see you have this problem and I have a solution and why won't you let me help you, right? To Oh God, there's a lot of anxiety here. Like I can see that this is actually anxiety and that's gonna be tied to the fact that we just don't have the skill development yet. But I'm gonna help them get that and here's why, right? And here's how. So early on we introduced this, we role play with this in mind, and we provide a slide deck that literally is like, here's what the vision is. Here's how the skills are gonna be built for people who are part of this. Mm -hmm. Here are how the incent here are some of the incentives. All of that is actually in the slide deck. They're just hidden slides. So they're there for you if you wanna see what these actually look like in the district. Okay, mm -hmm. so we wanted to tell you we're on cohort eight and this is what our cohorts of people have looked like throughout the years. And we've gone from all being in person to spending a lot of time remote together to cohort eight and cohort eight has come with us today. So we wanted to hear a little bit from them. So does anybody want to share why they wanted to be part of cohort eight? What drove you to this, to being part of this? Sure. So I changed buildings. Um, this is my second year in my new building. At my prior building, um, it was a very tech savvy group of staff. We actually mm -hmm. were fortunate to get the Connect Ed program through Apple. Um, mm -hmm. So we, as a staff at that other school, had a lot of experience in when I moved, it was a very different group. Um, mm -hmm. And I come, I came quickly to find out that I was one of the only teachers who was comfortable at all with technology. Mm -hmm. And um, so I kind of became a go-to person. Like even when I interviewed, they were like, ooh, mm -hmm. we would use you. <laughs> okay. um, so here I am and uh, I really enjoy helping people, still enjoy sure. helping people. So I said, okay, let's make it official. And clearly you enjoyed the technology. Yes. Somebody else want to share? Nobody wants to be put on the spot for it, sure. Um, so I'm a school psychologist Great. Uh, in Worcester and for me it was more about helping colleagues um, find a streamline an easier way to, stay, uh, to collect data, for example. For mm -hmm. us it's different, we're not in the classroom. Well, we're not teaching in the classroom, we are in the classroom a lot, but not teaching. So it's like helping colleagues gather the information that's needed, but using mm -hmm. Google um, apps or like the technology aspect to make our life a lot easier and save time. And through this, actually, I learned how, before I started, I was collecting data and I was doing 10 times more of the work than I, than I actually needed to do. Mm -hmm. And then now I learned a new way, and that's like the PD that I'm kind of putting together too. It's like, look at what I did, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> And how it, everything just, you know, it's just a lot easier. <laughs> Great. 
I love that. Have, have folks been excited to hear about and see some of the ways that you've been doing this already? Yes, I, I had sent out a um, first like a Google form to see first what my colleagues would want would be interested in, and that was like the common theme: data collection. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, next Monday is when we all get together. And that's when I'll be. I awesome. love it. That's great. And I think that's too where the cohorts, cohorts have evolved. When we began, it really was classroom teachers because the classroom teachers were the ones using the tools. The pandemic opened those tools up to be used by those that are not just in the role of in the classroom. And it's allowed us to really have people take on these responsibilities because the tools are right there for you all to be using too. What do you hope this does for you in the future? Like, what change do you think this will bring about for you personally and your building? Yeah. I think for my kindergartners that it will give them the confidence and the skills that they need at an early age to build on throughout their school career. And they, even though they won't really remember my lessons <laughs> because they're such a young age, that just it gives me joy of knowing that I help instill those foundational skills using the technology. Awesome. How has, so how have those efforts that you've been doing with your learners, how have those been like received or sort of witnessed by others in your building? I mean, kindergarten is a kind of a different world compared to the rest of elementary. So. Um, just hearing like what we've done and they're like wow they're young mm -hmm. and to already have that skills um, I was personally excited about the pandemic with like technology and like learning it gave me like a view of what it's like to be a virtual teacher um, so I was learning alongside with my students and so that they could see that everything is kind of like a trial and error and the fact that they moved on to first grade and um, teachers are like thank you for you know teaching that i didn't know that they already knew that or have like they knew how to basically do something um and they didn't have to teach it they could just move on great mm -hmm. great so each year we're, we're giving them a, a group of skills that they can then take on um what's something you like most about the cohort Being able to bounce ideas off of one another, see what has worked for them, mm -hmm. taking it to our level, uh, just getting the other ideas like outside of the box, outside of my own head, and what my school does, and hearing what other schools are doing. Um, it's a nice platform to be able to share and take it back and use it in our own buildings. Yeah, and our district's very big, so we have all of these buildings that are doing things. This is our way to try to share what we're doing and share that knowledge in a way that it's not 55 different things, right? right. Mm -hmm. For me too, like having so many different people in different roles, like that when thinking of how to plan a PD, mm -hmm. like for staff, sometimes I don't think about outside of a classroom role because that's my world. Mm -hmm. um, so it's also been really helpful to hear from school psychologists and you know special ed teachers and like all these different people in all different grades. Um, it just helps me to think about things and plan better for when I do present to the staff. Okay. Is there anything that you wish that was part of the program that <laughs> isn't? <laughs> Look, I have a list. <laughs> <laughs> And I think, too, um, one of the reasons when we give out our feedback every time is we say be specific is because people want to tell us they like the cookies, which is our joke, <laughs> that everybody likes the cookies. But really what it comes down to is we try really hard to keep our cohort understanding we're, we're treating you as professionals. We give you a nice extended lunch time because, A, as teachers, you're checking in probably with your classroom and trying to deal with what's going on as you're not there. But we're also giving you the tools to have the lens as to what's going on in your classroom when you're not there, when you're using Google Classroom. So we, we provide a professional as professional experience as we can. We do bring in the coffee and the cookies because we, we're trying to make sure that you're in a space that you feel welcomed and you're going to get all of the things that you need while also taking your lunch, dealing with what might be happening in your classroom, but that you're spending an entire day with us. And that is a long length of time for people. Yeah. We do get you all day. It's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, well, Thanks. thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as we said, right, we're a couple of hundred people into this process. We are eight cohorts into this process. And one of the things that we know is that, as we showed you before, we have that website where folks are sharing um, the things that they've created. There's a huge range of what people have created. Let's look at some, right? And what they've created when it gets shared means that we're having all of these resources throughout the district. Mm -hmm. And many of them have gone beyond, right? So. When we were thinking about this early on, right, we had this set of um, early folks. We wanted to go into year one, get those early adopters, the people that were super, super excited about it. And then as we moved on, we wanted to keep impacting those and right, start to build more of that momentum. I know that one of the reasons, so we had one teacher who was so frustrated um, in year one, they were like, I do not want to reset passwords. I do not want to like, I don't know why your printer's not working. Please let me teach. Um, and so, they came up with this really, really brilliant idea, which is whenever they would support somebody around a tool or a feature, they would make them a big pretty badge that says basically like, I am a, insert name of feature, rock star. And they'd put it on their door, so now they knew they learned it. <laughs> they wouldn't come back with the same question because that was part of what was happening. And that person now became a resource for any other teacher or even students who are interested in that. And they had the badge on their door about yay big. Right? And I think holding that badge is also important because what the I teachers did for us too was we understood from them that the tech that was needed wasn't just for the teachers that was needed. So that's when we incorporated principals into this idea and not teaching them the skills and not working with them to be Google certified trainers, but working with them to understand what technology looked like in their building. And this became extremely important when we went remote because now all of a sudden they had some of those tools and we continued with them remote so that they could see if I walked virtually into a classroom and all cameras are off and they're doing Pear Deck, what does that actually mean? Right. So while we taught them a little bit about Pear Deck, we really taught them about what does it mean the students are doing? What is the teacher done? And we used the apps that we were purchasing and used principals and then also added in the assistant principals so that they had a lens to what might the classroom look like when they're using those tools. So we've continued to include principals that want to join us. We have a prin uh, assistant principals that join us too. But the nice thing is we've had a lot of teachers, our I teachers, that have moved into the roles of coaches within the building. Some have moved into assistant principal and they're just making those steps up too from there yeah all right so we d we got real excited about looker studio for a while formerly called data studio and so this is one of the resources that um, was created which is just it's a simple report searchable so that any participant who is an i teacher anybody who is curious about who the i teachers are or anyone who wants to see others in their building or administrators they had this handy dandy little report that they could just search right by any of these features what else we got? This is our impact. Right, right. Yep. So we had, so some of the things with impact is where we're going to get to examples. Um, or, can we go back one? Sure. Or, right. What did you think of the training, right? How have these been going? And because we use the same um, uh, form for everything, right, we're able to look across all of those folks and we can see that is it going to help you do your job better? What? Like, <laughs> that's, uh, that's good news, is what that is. Right. And, right, one of the other questions is, like, would you send a friend? Right? Would you send a friend? Because that is going to be the testament. If you're willing to endorse us, right, that is a testament to the quality. And we are. 85% of participants are giving a four on whether they would uh, send a friend. And people do. That is one of the ways that we get the next round, um, the next cohort of folks. And because they're open to anybody who wants to apply for them, right? we get a huge range of folks who are already excited to be there. Now, this is what we hear from principals about iTeachers. Right? This is three quotes out of dozens because we do focus groups, because we um, collect data, we send out surveys, right? I don't know what we would have done. This reduced the anxiety, right? 
We could never have transitioned to remote so seamlessly. Let me tell you, two weeks, the week, two weeks before everything shut down, we had a workshop with principals and we played with Screencastify and taught them all how to make videos. And they were like, what am I ever gonna use this? Why are you teaching me this? We don't understand. And the next two weeks later, we were getting emails. Thank you so much for teaching us Screencastify. Oh my gosh, <laughs> right? And we had folks who were sitting in that room going, I don't want to do this. Two weeks later, that person was posting daily videos for their entire student population in their school, right? And like taking them on nature walks and doing the things that we saw mm -hmm. as a really effective practice during remote learning. When we don't know what to do, we go to them, right? Mm -hmm. Because the eye teacher is not just solving the problem for other teachers in the building. When we don't know what to do, Right? In lots of different ways, that eye teacher becomes the co-collaborator, the co-designer, right? They are, they are leading some of those conversations because it's not just about the tech, they have the frameworks, mm -hmm. right? They understand how um, that kind of a choice might be impacted or might um, align or not align with um, the ISTE standards. They know who to go to to talk about uh, the DLCS, they, right? We know who to point people to within the mm -hmm. district. Now, this was the question, and this is a more recent one, about do you think that leading PD is moving the needle, right, for tech in your building? And this is a more recent one, so we have way fewer responses, because this is not a feedback survey. Um, but you can see, even if we're just looking here, right, like six or seven and above, right, that is still meaningful and so we, we dig in to what some of the things are that might be impacting these folks. Sometimes it's time. Sometimes it's, um, you know, existing relationships. Sometimes it's just the size of the building and who they have, uh, who they have um, reach and impact with. But this is, you know, these, this is the kind of information that we collect and then dig into so that we can better understand and redesign in the future. Principals also think it's important. <laughs> Great. So here's what folks make. Actual examples. We had a teacher who needed to be able to effectively translate eight different languages in her classroom at all times. What? She was struggling, right? And so she invented this tool. She made a Google Sheet. You can type in to an original language, and it will automatically translate into all eight that you have in your classroom. There are more, you can add more. She also gave you instructions on how to add the languages that you want, right? She made this resource and then shared it with everybody in the room. I have shared it with colleagues. It is now publicly available. It's been published in a book. Like it's, right, the process of her solving a problem just using Google Sheets, right, wound up having massive impact on the district overall. Do you want to do this one? Sure. So one of our um, eye teachers in creating their video decided that um, they were going to use calendar more with their students. Um, in the elementary school, the special ed teacher or anybody who's providing service generally comes to the classroom to pick up the kids or in, and pull them out. So one way um, she was frustrated was that sometimes those schedules change and then the student might be waiting for them to come. So she used Google Cal Calendar with the students to create their schedule for the day. And when changes happen, she was able to change that schedule and it could be reflected rather than me sending a note to the office that translate, you know, gets the note back to the right classroom. This was just a visual representation that the student could check into their schedule and see what their day was gonna look like. Um, and we've linked the video there if anybody's interested in seeing their video. Because that was her, that was her solution for her Google Certified Trainer video, mm -hmm. right? So she had to come up with that creative solution in order to do that application, which means, right, we have 92 people who have gone through that process. We have 92 interesting and innovative uses of um, Google tools, and we have a video telling you how to do it for all of them. We had um, a group of educators come together to talk about, uh, they decided like we need more consistent um, and really accessible word lists with the audio attached, right? So they were like, cool, let's build it. There's five of us, let's go, right? And so they did, and that is now a resource for people. 
We've got some compu computational thinking here. They were building escape boxes and lock boxes that they wanted to break down. Here they provided what does it mean to build a digital breakout room? They provided a template, um, an agenda, and things that they could use, and they've added it into the resources for other teachers to use too. So they're making instructional tools, right? They're making tools that can be used by others. So this was just, they kept this really basic. These three folks came together and they were like, everybody needs this. Let's just make it and we'll give it to every school and we'll leave it like, is, we'll leave it kind of basic so that folks can modify it. They can turn it into their school colors, right? They can go wild and make it their own. But the baseline itself, right, is they're give, we're creating tools that can be used in, by an educator in their instruction, right? So that's the instructional tools section. So rather than starting fresh, they're taking tools and then they can make it their own. Yeah. Folks also, one of the other kind of areas is that there's lots of curating of resources, right? Yes, we know that you can go on the internet and find the things, and it is overwhelming. And when I am strapped for time and my brain is overwhelmed, right, I need to know someone I can trust that has put solid content in my hands. This is an example, right? So we have folks, um, curating resources, not just creating. So the example you're looking at here is we noticed that lots of administrators would look at Clever and wouldn't necessarily know what every single icon meant, right? Or how they might be being used. Are they being used in my school? Are they not being used in my school? So we threw this, we, we, Bethany and I like threw together this, mm -hmm. threw this together as a template and then reached out to iTeachers and said, please make us a two minute video that explains how you use this thing, what this thing is, so that we can give it to all principals. And so folks are doing that. You can see we've got videos in progress. We've got some that are still available. Anybody wants to do one on McGraw Hill, <laughs> jump on in. Um, and we've got the ones that are all the way ready. And so we, are, we bring this to administrators through other processes. Go for it. So we've got teachers that were building some UDL resources. Our district is really um, pursuing through the UDL. Each coach is building that knowledge within the classroom. So this just built that out, again, with more resources for them and some things that they were using within their schools. Yep, so we had, right, we know game-based learning, big deal. Lots of, lots of, t um, Oh my God, words hard. Lots of people are talking about it. I want to do more of it in their classrooms. We got it. Um, and so many ways that you could go with that, right? So this group of humans got together, all I teachers, and decided to curate some of their favorites, right? And make sure that everybody has access to this. We have one I teacher that said, you know what? We're using the MacBook all the time with teachers. Like we need some resources that are available with some quick shortcuts on how to do things and they created this to share with their teachers. Can somebody go out and grab um, a version of this, right, like from the world? Yes, and do they have copyright permissions to be using that in the way that they are? Does it reflect the most relevant um, shortcuts that the teachers in that building need, right? So this person made their own, sent it out, and it's modifiable. You can make your own changes to it for uh, your own colleagues and update it as things change with the Mac. We also have people prepare PD, right? So it's not just instructional tools, we're not just curating tools, but we're also just like, oh man, your colleagues need to learn how to organize drive more efficiently, which everyone does, right? Let's just make this self-paced PD. You can make a copy of the classroom and run it in your building, right? No problem, already made. And I think I will just say, and so on. Yeah. <laughs> and these resources are all in all the slides as well. Yep. So you can see these are all prepared PD sessions, and there's a huge range of them, right? So <laughs> that is us. That is our contact info. Whether you want to talk Google, whether you want to talk um, program um, development, implementation, you want to learn more about this, um, whether you want to talk ISTE certification, whether you just want to chat. I've got some terrible jokes for you. They're in my pocket. Happy to pull them out. Um, and also, uh, you need animal facts? <laughs> Come to me. <laughs> All right. And Bethany? All Folks. my contact information is there too, as an ed tech coach. Um, 
you know, our roles are, are very different being a consultant versus being in the buildings. So if you have questions about that as well, you can answer those. Thank you. And with that, we're going to go drink some water and take deep breaths. And we'll be hanging out and happy to answer any questions y'all have. And thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. All right. See you at lunch. <laughs>